Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and this is COP3530 Data Structures. And today we're going, to, we're going to talk about JavaScript. And the reason we're going to talk about JavaScript is it's because it's the language that I use in this course. And there's a lot of reasons why I use JavaScript. There may, I could use any language, and there are plenty of books and resources available for learning data structures in essentially every language because data structures are pervasive. They don't, are, they're, not, they're not confined to a single language. So what we're going to do here in learning a little bit of JavaScript, because I'm going to design this lecture to go with people who might not have had any experience with JavaScript but have had experience in programming and get you through what you need to know about JavaScript so that you can start sitting down and, and doing things in JavaScript. So what we're going to do is we're going to first look at the concept of the document object model. Okay, JavaScript is a language that's supported by every web browser. And it actually was kind of written as a true thing, a true language to be able to allow for manipulation of objects in web browsers. So it made it an object-oriented language. It made it 100% accessible to essentially everybody because everybody has access to browsers. If you have a computer, you probably have a browser. And it's an open language. And you go to a web page and there's JavaScript supporting it, you can go look at the code so you can see how things are done. Well, to understand this, you have to understand the content, to understand JavaScript and how you're going to work with JavaScript, you have to understand what the document object model is. And you are going to have to know how to get things in from the user, but everything that comes in from the user comes through the document object model. And you're going to have to understand how to get output back to the user. Now, in writing JavaScript inside of web pages, you're going to actually get that input from the web page, and you're going to put that output back to a web page. And again, I chose this because it's completely accessible to everyone. You can sit down with a text editor, write some JavaScript, bring it up in a browser, and see the code execute. Now, we're going to look at some of the details. Okay, how do you write a function in JavaScript? How do you build objects? And how do you extend existing objects, which is going to get us a little bit into object-oriented programming. And I do realize that some of the people in this class may not have actually had any experience with object-oriented programming. So JavaScript is the language of choice for manipulating HTML documents or hypertext markup language documents. What you, everybody would commonly think of as web pages. A web page is simply a document, a text-based document written in a language called HTML with supporting JavaScript, which can be in the page or it can be in a separate file. Okay. HTML objects or documents actually follow and they fall into this thing called the DOM. We call it the DOM, it's the document object model. And everything that you see in a web page is an object inside the DOM. So you can manipulate those objects with code. So every web, so when you see web pages doing things, well, you have web pages that are static, that simply sit there and don't do anything. Well, they don't have any programming behind the scenes that tell them to do something. But many web pages that you use nowadays are completely dynamic and interact with you. And they interact, the language that defines those interactions is JavaScript, but the interaction is via the DOM. So we're going to learn how to access this. So if you were to look at a web page, okay, a web page would be, hey, that piece right there that the user is looking at right there, that is the document. And actually, literally, that is the document. The page itself is accessible through a global object called document. So when you're writing JavaScript code, you're going to call it document. And it's a global object that exists already that allows you to actually get things. So how do you access the document? Well, let's first put something on the document. Now, I could say, let's just first put something onto a web page. Okay, but really, I'm going to be specific and specify that we're actually adding elements or objects to the document because these, these elements exist. As far as your coding is concerned, these objects exist in the DOM, and they're accessible through the document object. 
So they exist inside the DOM, and the DOM is just the model that, that encompasses how the document works. So if I were to write a piece of HTML and just take the HTML text here, this input, with three attributes, or you can call them three properties, and I wrote them into a text file, and I saved it with an HTML extension, it would put a button on the screen. Well, literally, it's putting a button, on in, it's putting a button into the DOM, which is accessible through the document object in code. But you're physically going to see a button on the screen. It's really that simple. And this is just purely text. The three properties are the three attributes. Now, I'm going to use the term properties because when you're talking HTML, they like to say entities and attributes. But when you're talking programming, you like to say objects and properties. So I'm going to say properties. There's three properties here, type, ID, and value. And each of them has a meaning. The element is called the input, and it's actually also called the object. It is an input object. Okay? It has the three properties. Type, which says, hey, this is a button. Okay? It has an ID, which means that I have the ability to access that object by its name or its ID. It has an ID that I can say, hey, give me the object with the ID such and such, and now I'm going to do something with it. And the value is simply what's displayed on the top of the button. Now, there are other, uh, other properties, not just these three, but we're not going to talk about those just yet. So if you were going to access this object, which lives inside the document, how do you do this? OK, so I'm going to now start writing some JavaScript code. Now, in JavaScript, everything is an object. So you've probably, because you've programmed, have defined variables. Well, I'm not going to define in JavaScript any specific variable type. I'm just going to call everything a var. But in reality, everything in JavaScript is an object. So when you define a variable using var to define the variable, okay, you're defining that this variable actually is an object. So in this case, I'm going to say var a button. I now am saying I've got a variable with the name a button. And I'm going to set it equal to, now I'm setting it equal to something now It's really interesting here, document. Well, I said before that document is this global object that's accessible to you in JavaScript code that is the entire page. That's the whole thing that your user is seeing. So that document actually comes back and it's everything. Now in object programming, we use this thing called dot notation. So if I were to say dot document dot, I can now say, well, what belongs to the document? The document has properties and the document has methods. And methods and functions are a term that can be used interchangeably. So I can say that the document has properties. These are things that I can set that are variables. And properties, and, and, I'm sorry, and functions where I can actually tell it to do something or I can tell it to get something. Well, in this case, I'm telling the document to get something. Now, all the objects that you put on that page are going to live inside that document. It's, the document is a big bag full of stuff that you threw in there. And if you gave every single one of those things an ID, this function, get element by ID, can pull back the one that you want. So I'm saying, get element by ID, my button. Well, let's go backwards just a step. Okay, my button was the ID of the button that I made that I stuck on the page. So what's going to happen is a button, okay, that variable is going to actually be the button. It's a variable. It's an object. It represents the button. It doesn't represent the text on the button. And don't make that mistake. It represents the button, okay, not the text on the button. Okay, the button has a value, which is the text on top of it, and it has an ID, and it has a type. It has all those things, okay, but... The button itself, if I say print a button, it's going to print out an input HTML input element. It's going to say, this is what it is. It doesn't have a way to print it. It just says, this is what it is. Okay. Well, okay, that's because 
You may be expecting to see the value on top of the button. That's not what you're going to get. You actually have to ask it for the value to get that. So the document is the document. Global access, globally available to you. Get element by ID is a function that goes into that document and pulls something out by its ID. And a button is the object that you've just created that you're now setting to be equal to that button. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to do some stuff with this button. So we're going to have some fun with the button. So let's work, it, we'll work on the button a little later here. Before we work on the button, we're also going to look at the concept of events. As a computer user, in a graphical user interface, which you use, okay, unless you're doing command line, you're using a graphical user interface. The user does things. They go and they see a button and they click on it, or they may hover over it with the mouse. Okay, things that they can do. Well, when a user does something, that is an event. An event is triggered. And when you define in the HTML that object that you're going to stick into, in this case, the button that you're going to stick inside the document, and it's sitting there, you can also say, well, you know what? I'm going to set a prop this event here, okay, the on click to do something. And that something that it's going to do, you see change value of this on click, it's change value. Well, that change value has to be something that can actually be done. But change value is a function in JavaScript. It's what it's going to be. It's going to be a function in JavaScript. I'm going to actually write a JavaScript function that when the user clicks on it, it gets triggered and it occurs. But remember, I said in JavaScript, everything is an object. So I can actually create objects which can be executed, which is what's going to actually occur. It's an object on click. It is going to get actually executed when the user clicks on something. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's see. Let's write some JavaScript code again back into JavaScript. JavaScript code, function, change value. I'm going to write the function change value. Well, think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get that button. Okay, var a button equals document dot get element by ID, and I'm going to track bring that thing back. My button, my button is now now the a button is that object that I created. Okay, I went to the went to the document and got it. Now the a button, if you recall, had a property called value. I can change that value. I'm going to change that value to changed button value. So now what would happen here if the user clicks on the button, the button has an on-click property which knows that it's going to have a function that it's going to call in JavaScript that I've written. It's going to call that function and then the value of the button, which is what you see on the, the, the top of the button, is going to get changed to that new value. A lot of stuff happened with just a little bit of code there. Okay, so let's go back through that once again. HTML, a language for writing web pages, very straightforward and easy to use, and most everybody here is going to have had some familiarity with HTML. I'm using it because this is infinitely accessible. I don't need you to install any software on your computers to do work. I don't need you to worry about compilers and compiler issues. You can write the stuff in text and test it out. Okay? The DOM, the document object model, is that model which says, hey, this is how everything on that page is done. Okay, the big bag of all those objects as far as we're concerned right now. Um, we know that we can add documents to the, um, the, we can add objects to the document, and we know we can actually get those objects back in code in JavaScript. I have ability to access those things. You can write functions, and you can, act, you can take events and, uh, and attach those events through the, through the property of what that event is to some object, and have it execute the code when the user does the thing that's mentioned in the event. Wow, like the on click. User clicks, calls the function, something happens. Now, let's create an object. And this is where we're gonna actually get deeper and deeper into JavaScript. Well, anytime you create anything in JavaScript, you have created an object. But the concept of object-oriented programming is to encapsulate methods or functions, remember, they're interchangeable, and properties inside of something. 
Well, that something is an object. I want to encapsulate them. I want them to belong to something. So when I say I've created an object called a car and the car has a has an object that belongs to it called a wheel, and I create another object called a motorcycle, and the motorcycle has an object called a wheel, okay? Those two wheels belong to those other objects. They're encapsulated inside the definition of either a car or a motorcycle. It's encapsulation. It's an important aspect of all object-oriented programming. Well, in JavaScript, everything's a function, but I can actually build this ability to encapsulate things like properties into an object. And how do I do that? Well, remember, I said everything's an object. And to define any type of variable, I would say var. So let's say var an object. Let's just say var. I'm going to create var. I'm going to call it an object. And I'm going to set that object to be equal to a function. The function's name isn't function. The function's name is an object, and the function is an object. So I can create properties that belong specifically to that function, which by the way is also an object. Wow, I mean, it's getting kind of confusing, but this is how it works. Now, first thing is, is I would never call my object an object, because it's an object. So let's do this again. When I'm defining functions and methods, I like to start with lowercase on the first word and uppercase on the other ones. That's a convention that you'll see is followed by lots of programmers. But when I want to define an object, because I'm defining an object, I'm not making an instance of the object, I'm defining what the object actually is. You can't just make an object and run it, you actually have to make an object and then implement the object and then do stuff with it. So I'm defining the object. So guess what I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use a big letter because it's an object. Objects like to have big letters because they're objects, they're important, they're defining how things work. So now my object is my object. It's still a function. And by the way, function is a keyword. You can't capitalize that one because function is a keyword in JavaScript. I'm saying that my object is a function and my function has two properties that belong to my object. Those two properties are an integer and a string. Well, they could have been called anything. I just happened to call them an uh, integer and a string. And the this keyword that you use, this dot, this keyword says this property belongs to this function, which by the way is also an object. Wow. Boom. Whole much going on there. Isn't that great? Okay, so you've got all this together, but all you've def done is define what an object is. You can't do anything with it right now. You have to do something else first. You have to make an instantiation. I wouldn't say a copy, because a copy of an object is another object, or actually we could say a class. Okay, this defines the class. I'm using class and object interchangeably here, but if you want to get down to this true semantics, this defines a class. Okay, now, we are going to actually make an instantiation. That is something that actually does what you've defined for this to do. So let's do that. Okay, we're going to write a function called change value. Okay, this one isn't, this one isn't actually set to be any variable here. And I'm going to go ahead and get a button. Okay, a button, and that button's going to be going to go into the document and grab out that element that I put in the, uh, into the document, which was called my button. And it's going to bring it back out. So the button is now here. I'm going to now make an instantiation of the object I defined. The object I defined is called my object. So there, an object equals new my object. Hmm. An object is an instantiation of an object that you defined with the my object. You said this is my object, this is how this thing is gonna work. So now an object is gonna have a property called an integer and a string because you defined it as having those things back when you defined it. So I can throw up a, an alert. An alert is something that you'll use all the time in JavaScript programming. It just pops something up on the screen and I'm gonna throw up an alert that says an object dot an integer. Well, an object is an instantiation of my object and an integer is a property of my object and also a property of the instantiation an object. And when we define the object, 
back whoa, it was like hours ago, when we defined that object, it had the property set, an integer property set to zero. So hopefully, my alert is going to bring up a zero. I can see that. And then something else I'm going to do is I'm going to set the value property of a button to be equal to an object, a string. Well, an object is an instantiation of my object, and it had a property called a string. And as I recall, the property as a string, didn't I set that equal by default to be high? So hopefully, if you look at this, the A button is the button object, the value is the value property. That value is actually what shows up on the button itself as the text. And I instantiated an object, and by default, an object, the A string property, is going to be high when you instantiate it. So hopefully the button will say high. And hopefully we get the alert that says zero. Well, guess what? You do. The alert an object gives you the zero. It also gives you a bunch of other pieces of messages because it says, hey, this is what's going on. I'm going to pop up an alert. Here's what you wanted to put in the alert. It's a zero. So all we told to put in the alert. And the button changes to say high because high was the default value of the property that was created when you made an object, which was an instantiation of my object. And now I'm going to introduce one more object-oriented word for you, the constructor. The constructor, in this case, is that function because it gets called automatically. Okay, we call a constructor a method that gets called by default on the creation of an instance of an object. I'm going to say that again. A constructor is a method or function that is called automatically on the creation of an instance of an object. Okay, and actually the terminology there is important. Now, deep breath, there's more. You can now create an object. My object is the definition of an object, and you can create these objects. But what if somebody else created the object, and you want to go back and modify their code? Or you create an object, and you're going, hmm, I'd like to add some stuff to that object. Well, JavaScript allows you this incredible capability, which we're going to use in this class, to extend the capabilities of objects. It allows you to add properties to objects after the fact. It allows you to add methods and functions to objects after the fact, to the definition of the object, to the class itself. And it's called the prototype. It's a prototype keyword. So my object, which is the class or object that I created that's the definition of the object, if I say my object.prototype, now I can give it some sort of name. I'm going to give it the name a function. A function is going to be added to that, that name, all function, is going to be added to that class. And I can say, you know what, that function, I'm going to go ahead and define it. That function is going to be an actual function. It's going to be a function. It's going to take one argument, and all it's going to do is it's going to return this string. A string is a string of text. Prototype function with argument an arg. Okay. So it doesn't do a whole lot, but it does something. So I'm now going to go back and change my code for change value. And all I'm really doing here is I'm saying, you know what? A button, look at that very last line, a button.value. We know that whatever we set that equal to is going to show up in the button. A button.value is equal to an object dot a function. Well, a function is something that I just added to the class, my object, and an, an object is an instantiation of my object. It's going to call a function. It's sending it an argument called sample argument, and the function, which is a method or a function that belongs to the object, is going to return back the string, and that string is going to end up being in the button. Okay, another deep breath. What did we do? We built a class or an object, and we extended it. That's really what we've done. It's not that terrible. So if you review this, 
In JavaScript, everything is an object, okay? You can create objects simply by saying var something is equal to something. Every time you create anything in JavaScript, you're creating an object. Functions are objects. Functions that contain functions are objects. Functions that contain properties are objects, okay? Objects can have objects that, that belong to them. It's all objects. Everything's an object. I'm just, it's just totally objective. You can extend that object with a prototype keyword and you However, and key to this, in understanding anything in object-oriented programming, the class, often interchanged with the word object, so you've got to get used to that because we use the word object to refer to the instantiation of the object and we use the word object to, to, to refer to the definition of the object, but typically we use the word class only to refer to the definition of the object. Okay, so that one at least is unique, but you're going to have to get used to the way that the language is used. I created an object, and then when somebody says I created an object, you can say, well, did you create an instantiation of the object, or did you create a class? Because it can mean both. Okay, but you do know that you have to instantiate them to use them. Last piece, we're going to talk about how to get stuff out. Well, you get stuff out in JavaScript, you simply have to have a place to put it. So if I go to my HTML document and I create a div or a p, when a p is just a shortcut for paragraph, okay, Java, uh, HTML says, okay, I've got this tag, it's called a div, it's got to have a close tag, and between the two tags, I got some stuff in there. So if you see the little uh, bracket and the other bracket, there's a, nothing in there right now, but that's actually someplace that I can put stuff. I can actually add stuff to that section. Okay, it's really kind of cool. And the div has an ID. Well, it's a div. It's in my HTML. It, because it's an object on my page, it's going to get stuck into the document, and I can bring it out of the document, and I can do stuff to it. So what am I going to do? Right here, I'm simply going to say, I want to change the inner HTML property of the div to be equal to an object of function sample argument, which we know returns the, um, the text that the prototype function text that we actually had that return, okay? Okay, well, the inner HTML is just a pre, -def I mean, that's, that's, a def that's a method, or I'm sorry, it's a property of the div. And a div is an instantiation of a div. What's going to happen? Boom! Okay, you're going to get that bottom. That's, didn't I didn't change the button here. I changed the text below the button. There was no text below the button before until I put the div there. But if I don't, put anything in that div, it's not, you're not going to see anything. It's just going to be blank text. Well, blank text just looks like the background screen. But by setting the inner HTML property, voila, I now have the text showing up underneath the button inside the div or also can be inside of a paragraph. So any HTML, anything in HTML has properties and methods that are, that are actually you can do this with. So that's kind of cool. We're not doing that in this class. This isn't what this class is about. We're doing data structures. There is a class that does that. COP 4813 gets into all the guts of manipulating the document. Okay, not what we're doing here. But since I mentioned it, let's talk a little bit about what you could do. The div has other properties. Like one of the properties of the div, of a div, is a style. And if you're up into CSS and cascading style sheets, style has its own language. Really cool stuff that you can do, but I can actually set that style property in JavaScript code, which I'm doing right here. And all I'm doing is I'm saying that the color is blue and the background color is yellow. You can see a div dot style color colon blue semicolon background dash color colon yellow semicolon. That, by the way, all those semicolons and dashes and that's all important because that's actually the language of CSS. And if you're going to set the style property of an object, you have to use the language that is used to define style, which is, by the way, CSS. Okay, that's not this class. We don't care here, but I did want you to at least see it. So what happens? Well, I've got blue text on yellow background. Okay, well, that's the style that I set. I said, make the text blue, make the background yellow, and here it is. So you can do all these types of things. You can change the, you can change the font, you can have it move. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do. Hopefully, BAMO, JavaScript in one lecture. What is the DOM? Okay, how do you get stuff from the DOM? 
How do you output to the DOM? Okay, how do you write a function in JavaScript? How do you create an object in JavaScript? And how do you extend those objects? That is, a, that is basically JavaScript in a nutshell. There is tons more that JavaScript can do, but everything is really just building off of these simple things about getting input and output in. JavaScript has all sorts of built-in operators and stuff, and actually, it, it's just an amazing language for that. But this is how to get started in writing JavaScript code and what you're going to need to know to be successful in JavaScript in this class. So hopefully you've got all this down pat and I've got you started on that wonderful path of learning JavaScript and all the incredible things that you can do once you learn JavaScript. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Ron England from Daytona State College signing out.